Hey everybody, so in this video, I wanted to do a quick review of the difference between merit goods, demerit goods, common pool resources, and public goods. The reason I'm doing this is because in a lot of my students' assessments, I see that some of them are a bit difficult to distinguish. So I'm going to talk about merit goods first. All right, so merit goods are basically Goods or services that generate positive externalities of consumption when they are consumed. So they generate positive consumption externalities. So what you need to do is you need to draw a positive consumption externalities diagram with the MSB curve being higher than the MPB curve. Okay, and this is the welfare loss, the green triangle here, welfare loss, and the distance between Qopt and Qm is the amount of underconsumption or under allocation. Now, remember, when it comes to merit goods, the demand curve is the MPB, that's why I'm highlighting it, and the supply curve is the MPC equals MSC. So QM and Q and PM, sorry, is the market equilibrium. This is not a situation of disequilibrium. The market is at equilibrium. Okay? There's just no allocative efficiency. So the market is at equilibrium, it just hasn't achieved allocative efficiency because allocative efficiency happens when MSB equals MSC. Okay? Allocative efficiency here happens at Q opt and P opt. The welfare loss is this triangle here that is pointing towards the point of allocative efficiency. All right. Now, so consumers create external benefits for society when it comes to the consumption of merit goods like education and healthcare. They lead to benefits for the whole of society, like lower unemployment, lower crime rates, higher economic growth. What are some possible policies to encourage the consumption of merit goods? The government can use legislation and regulation, like everybody has to go to school. In many countries, it's illegal for you to be outside school or not enrolled in school, at least until a certain age. Um, education and awareness creation about the benefits of that product. Uh, nudges, which is a high level only concept. If you're not high level, just ignore this. Government provision, direct provision of this merit good or subsidies. Okay, legislation and awareness creation, uh, those first two things will shift the MPB to the right, closer to the MSB, while government provision and subsidies will actually shift the supply curve MSC to the right, with bringing the equilibrium quantity closer to QOPT or at QOPT. Remember, the vertical distance between the MSB and the MPB is the external benefit. Now, let's flip everything and look at demerit goods, the total opposite. So demerit goods are goods or services that um, create negative consumption externalities or basically impose external costs on the rest of society when they are consumed. OK, so you have the exact same diagram as merit goods. You're just flipping the MPB and the MSB. You'll notice these are the exact same diagram. You're just swapping the MPB and the MSB. In the case of demerit goods, the demand curve is the MPB. The supply curve is the MPP equals MSC, but because of the external cost, the benefit to society is actually lower than the benefit to the individual, to the private benefit to the individual consuming. So now you have a welfare loss that points to the left. Sorry, I'm a bit uncoordinated sometimes. Okay, remember when there are positive externalities, the welfare loss points to the right. When there are negative externalities, the welfare loss points to the left. To the left, to the left. All right, no, I'm not going to start singing Beyonce. That's not what this channel is about. All right, so when you have demerit goods, you have the opposite problem of underconsumption, which is overconsumption. In this situation, the market equilibrium, QM and PM, QM is greater than the optimum equilibrium, QOPT. There's a problem of overconsumption. So consumers impose external costs on society, like the use of cars and heating, when you use cars and heating, you are using up fossil fuels, and that creates external costs like global warming, negative effects on health because people have to breathe in all these carbon emissions and environmental pollution. The consumption of cars and fossil fuels pollutes the environment, right? So what it does is it 
generates negative externalities of, com of consumption. Other demerit goods are things like smoking, um, alcohol, uh, drugs, especially addictive hardcore drugs. All right, how can the government correct these um, de these negative consumption externalities? Well, indirect Peguvian taxes will shift the supply curve to the left, bringing the quantity closer or to Qopt. Uh, legislation and regulation will also increase the costs of production and shift the supply curve to the left. Um, education and awareness creation will um, decrease demand. They will decrease the MPB closer to the MSB and nudges as well is a higher level only concept um, from behavioral economics. Remember, just as the vertical distance between um, the MSB and the MPB in the case of merit goods is the external benefit, the vertical distance between the MSB and the MPB in the case of demerit goods is the external cost. Okay, so it's a negative benefit. It's an external cost. That's why the MSB is lower than the MPB. All right, so that's merit and demerit goods. Let's move on to common pool resources. So common pool resources, um, they don't have a diagram specifically for them, but you can use a negative production externalities diagram. And that externality, that external cost, is the overuse of the common pool resource. So common pool resources basically use a negative production externalities diagram for the product, not for the resource itself. So if the common pool resource is the ocean, the fish stock in the ocean, you can't draw a diagram for fish stock in the ocean, but you can draw a diagram for sushi. Maybe there's an overproduction of sushi and the external cost is the overfishing of fish in the ocean. So here you have the supply curve is the MPC and the demand curve is the MPB and MSB. The market outcome is QM and PM. However, QM is much higher than it should be. There's a problem of overproduction of, say, fish. And the external cost in this case is basically overfishing or basically depletion of the common pool resource. Okay? In this case, it's not the sushi fish that is the common pool resource. It's actually the fish stock in the ocean of the common pool resource. Okay? So, um, in this case, producers are imposing external costs on society. Production by use of fossil fuels, external costs include global warming, negative effects on health, environmental pollution. How can the government correct? Again, indirect Pigovian taxes, which will shift the MPC curve, the supply curve, to the left, closer to MSC. Carbon taxes, in the case of fossil fuels, will also raise the cost of production and shift the supply curve to the left. Tradable permits, which basically limits the amount of pollution people can produce, okay? Um, or the amount of fish they can catch in one day or in one year, or the amount of trees they can cut in the case of deforestation, so on. Legislation and regulation will also raise the cost of production and shift the supply curve to the left. Collective self-governance, encouraging people who benefit from the resource to actually conserve it and manage it themselves. Education awareness creation about the unsustainable nature of people's consumption and production habits and international agreements because a lot of common pool resources are global in nature and require global solutions to manage these resources. So remember, common pool resources, I forgot to say this at the beginning, right? They are non-excludable but rivalrous. Non-excludable means it's practically impossible to exclude someone from benefiting from the resource. However, rivalrous means one person's consumption of the resource actually leaves less for other people. Because of this non-excludable but rivalrous nature, they are prone to unsustainable overuse. And we call this unsustainable overuse the tragedy of the commons. I'll come back to public goods in a second, but I wrote here, you have to distinguish between the tragedy of the commons and the corresponding common pool resource of that tragedy. So deforestation is an example of a tragedy of the commons. What's the corresponding common pool resource? Forests. Overfishing is an example of the tragedy of the commons. What's the corresponding common pool resource? Fish stock in the oceans. Climate change is an example of the tragedy of the commons. What's the corresponding common pool resource? It's actually the atmosphere, not fossil fuels, by the way. Fossil fuels are not a common pool resource. Fossil fuels are excludable and rivalrous, by the way. They are a private good. However, overuse of fossil fuels is damaging the atmosphere. The atmosphere is the common pool resource.
okay? Overgrazing by farmers and herders. What's the common pool resource that corresponds to this tragedy? Grazing land and pastures, okay? So that brings us to the last um, part of this video, which is public goods. Public goods are non-excludable, just like common pool resources. However, they are non-rivalrous. So non-excludable means you cannot exclude people from benefiting from the resource or the good. Non-rivalrous means one person's consumption doesn't reduce the amount available for everybody else. Remember, here, non-excludability and rivalry together equal, so non-excludable plus rivalrous equals the tragedy of the commons. But in the case of public goods, non-excludable plus non-rivalrous equals the free rider problem. Okay, you need to be able to distinguish between the tragedy of the commons and the free rider problem. So how can the government intervene in response to public goods? Well, through direct provision, that's one way, or instead of directly providing it itself, contracting out to the private sector or subsidizing the private sector to provide that public good. Okay, I'm going to wrap up by quickly looking at this table. Remember, when goods are rivalrous and excludable, this is in the case of private goods, okay? These are goods with or without positive or negative externalities sold for a price, okay? All goods with or without externalities, I, whether they are, if, sorry, if they are rivalrous and excludable, they are private goods. Merit goods, as long as they're produced by the market, and demerit goods. Examples, computers, books, clothes, education, petrol, all of these are still private goods. Merit goods and demerit goods are still private goods. Public schools are still not public goods because public schools are excludable and rivalrous. Like here in the United States, you can't just go to any public school. You have to live in the zip code. And if you're sitting in a public school classroom, you're taking attention from everybody else. So you can't argue that public schools are a public good. They might be a quasi public good, but they're not non-excludable and not non-rivalrous. All right, what if, what if you have excludability and non-rivalrous. That gives you something called quasi or quasi-public goods. These are goods that do not fall neatly into the other three categories. Often, but not always, they have large positive externalities. So they may be provided by the government, like uncrowded toll roads, museums, public swimming pools that charge entrance fees, cable TV. Okay, These are goods that are excludable, but not completely non-rivalrous. So they don't fit neatly. We call them um, quasi or quasi public goods. All right, what about non-excludable but rivalrous? Here is what we call common pool resources. So these are natural resources that are not owned by anyone. They're not sold in markets and not having a price. That's why we don't draw a diagram for the common pool resource itself. We draw a diagram for the good or service that is produced using this common pool resource. Their lack of a price makes them subject to overuse, unsustainable use, depletion, and degradation. Example, forests, rivers, lakes, soil quality, fish in the oceans. These are all examples of common pool resources. Last but not least, non-excludable but and, sorry, non-rivalrous gives us public goods. Okay, These are socially desirable goods that are not provided by private firms because it is not possible to charge a price. If the good or service is non-excludable and not rivalrous, how are you going to charge a price? right? How are you going to exclude people? How are you going to charge a price? You can't. Thus, they are subject to the free rider problem. People use them without having to pay. Since they are socially desirable, they are often produced by the government and provided free of charge. The best examples of public goods are national defense and street lighting, not public schools or public hospitals. Public schools and public hospitals are merit goods that are provided by the public sector. It does not make them public goods. I know I say this a lot in all of my videos because it's important, all right? You need to believe me. Okay, and there you are. Some, you know, review. I hope you found this useful. I talked about merit goods, demerit goods, common pool resources, and public goods. Um, public goods don't really have a diagram because, again, because of the free rider problem, the market won't provide them. There is no equilibrium. Makes sense? So that's why they're usually provided by the government directly or contracted out to the private sector. Please like, share, subscribe, become a member if you want more exclusive content and practice questions about these things. And yeah, thank you very much for all your help. And well, not help. You didn't really help me with making this video, but thank you very much for um, following my content and my channel. And I wish you a great rest of your week. Bye.